Waikato farmers Graham and Diana Smith use EID technology as a key management tool on their bull beef operation on a farm that's been in the family for 38 years. Their daughter Donna, who in 2006 was a World Equestrian Games New Zealand team member, also runs a horse eventing and training business. We're in North Waikato, Tikawara. Traditionally, North Waikato is dry, summer dry, but we can get and usually get pasture growth of some sort right through the whole season. We're 205 hectares. It's a question business here based as well. And uh, we, we still came here um, in 1975, had an all sheep regime, got cleaned out seriously with eczema at the end of the 80s, worked our way through from um, really anything we could do, uh, grazed calves, grazed dairy cows, rear calves. We ended up in the system we're in now because we used to start rearing calves and selling 100 kilo calves and then 400 kilo store cattle. We had some cattle uh, that were, were too heavy and so I was able to see what these, there was only five or six, see what these things can do. When we realised the potential of what bulls can do in their second spring, we thought, hey, this is where we need to go. As far as the technology we're using, we are reliant on that. One, it makes you more efficient, but I think probably as, as important as that is it actually makes it more interesting. We started off just using what sheep scales we had when we shifted to sheep to uh, the load bars, from sheep to cattle. As the cattle got bigger, we went to this, which is probably one of the greatest things we bought a crush, because everything that's in there is weighed. I think to start with, all we wanted really was date, animal number, and, and what its weight was. Then we wanted to know what its weight gain was, and then we wanted to know more after that. And so quite recently, we got hold of one of these, and it can give us a lot more information and, and back further in the animal's history too. Prior to EID, we just had ordinary management tags, just visual tags we'd read. We had a little set of scales that we'd write down the animal's number visually and then write down its weight, what we saw. Um, half the time, like right now, with these guys here, they've been out in a wet break, you wouldn't be able to read half the tags we used to use. So after a while we got sick of rubbing the tags. Colin from Gallagher said, hey, have you ever heard of EID? No, we hadn't because it was about 10 years ago and nobody really had. Uh, like a lot of others, they were investigating it. And so uh, when we saw, as soon as I saw what it was, that we could run animals through and scan it, uh, and the animal, the animal number came up, and then the, even on the other, other scales we had, the, other, the, the weight came up, and that was what we wanted. Also on the other scales, it shows you a weight gain graph, but that, that didn't hold. In other words, once it had gone to the next animal, that was the end of that, whereas this information can go right through and you can drill down into each animal. We've always used um, half duplex tags. They read really well, as you can see, apart from when an animal went in and had its head down, that's always an issue, but they lift them up in the end. But basically, as soon as they're two thirds of the way or a third of the way into the scales, with the half duplex tags, the readers picked it up straight away, bang. With the full duplex tags, uh, I realise they have other applications, but I've got cattle here now that we've bought in with full duplex tags, and they're a lot slow. Just uh, slows the whole process down. You've actually got to wait for the tag to communicate with the reader, and that's yeah, it's time. The tags themselves, uh, the first question a lot of people ask is how many do you lose? Uh, maybe one or two a year if, you, if it's a bad time. Uh, we do use a, um, a management tag that we, we link with it, so if we do happen to lose one, um, we'll actually be able to relate back to the management tag, back to the EID tag, and then replace the tag number. I don't think you can put a value on it. It's a bit like that, that when we had sheep and we had a wool shed. I mean, what value do you put in a wool shed? It's, that's for harvesting wool, this is for harvesting beef. Uh, it tells us all the time. As the animal, like these guys have been weighed at the beginning of May, uh, every drench I'll weigh them. That also comes into play. Uh, if it's a pour on, you can actually relate the, the volume of drench you give to that animal through the scales and, and dial up the right dose rate for it. Uh, as far as the, uh, the whole process goes, we know all the time where our animals are at. What we've got here is this, this is the last animal that walked off the scales. That's its tag number picked up by the panel reader. This is its current weight. Over here when the animals came on, we entered the fact that it was a rising one bull. Um, it was male, obviously, um, and it was Frisian. Now, in behind it also, we enter the, uh, the rearer or wherever we got it from so we can go back later on at the end of the bull's life and, and work through and, and work out where the best calves came from. In here is something I've had to play with, not very familiar with it, but it's, it's a very good tool, is at its current weight gain, of 0.93, that's its current daily gain since last weighing, which is the beginning of May. Um, at a current daily weight gain in 200 days, it would be 437 kilos. That's a tool that we're gonna be using a lot more, especially for older bulls later on. 
What I'll do with that mob now, there's, there's 39 or 40 or something in there. It's too big a mob to hold back uh, together for much longer. I'll split them and I'll split them based on weight and weight gain. So before I used to just split it on weight, but there's some animals in there that are obviously more efficient at converting grass into, into weight. So I'll, I'll use these, the information on here now to actually de decide which, so that instead of just being the heaviest animal, it'll now be the animal with the most potential. As far as the information that comes from uh, EID, we collect it, I think we, we should own it. That's easy to say, probably hard to do. I think there's a huge room for extension in, in that, j rather than just have it as a traceability system, it, it's got huge on-farm benefits which we're already using, but also it, if we could plug into the parentage, the breeding of the animals that we're getting, we can then pay the, 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 bre the breeder, the dairy farmer, more for particular calves, there's other calves that wouldn't have a market, that's fine. I think probably there's different breeds that come through, um, people like different breeds, just like people like different breeds of any sheep, cattle. And I think if we can plug into that sort of information, but at the moment we can't.